Alright guys, so this is your end of the world update and let's talk about the technology war because it's getting from bad to worse. And let's put it bluntly, it's getting downright desperate. The US is ramping things up from an 8 to a 20. They are beginning to realize a few things here. Even allies like the Netherlands are telling Washington restrictions on China just aren't viable. It damages the economies of the countries in the G7. On the trip to Washington, the Dutch economy minister tore apart orders to punish China. The Chinese are an important trade partner. We have our own economy to upkeep and to make sure our companies can do business freely. So chip making technology from ASML and even Japan won't stop flowing to China, which means it's just a matter of time before the Chinese catch up. Because of this, the US Biden is getting very desperate and they are now lashing out at the global semiconductor market. US officials are now on the brink of punishing the world, the entire world. A cap on exports of AI chips from Nvidia and AMD could be slapped on Pacific countries. This even includes the Middle East and it's all in the name of national security. Over 40 countries have already been slapped with chip restrictions. There's a limit to how many AI chips they can buy from the US from companies like Nvidia. Now this is bad for their bottom line, but to contain China, anything goes now. And here's why. China and the world, they are bypassing US sanctions because there's a ton of money to be made. As it stands, Beijing still needs Western semiconductors for their most advanced processors. A Chinese think tank has come out saying that data centers still need chips from Nvidia. Making the transition to local alternatives is too costly at this time. Making the switch to Chinese chips will take years and in the meantime, US gear is still needed. And thanks to this situation, there's a thriving black market for traders around the world to export to China. So they buy the chips from the US, they repackage them a little, slap a little bit of magic and ship the stuff to Beijing. And the margins are simply, simply incredible. For the A100 chip, resellers are asking for over $22,000. That's a very big premium considering in the US, it's only around 10 grand. That's at least a 100% profit margin. Some traders are even shipping entire servers to China worth $300,000, with each server holding a bunch of high-end Nvidia chips. When there's a will, there's always a way. Remember, we are talking about the most advanced chips in the market. China is the biggest producer of legacy semiconductors, so that area is covered. But when it comes to building AI models, Beijing still needs to import Western chips. Bridging the gap between the US and China will take some time. Now, the US has been restricting high-end chips to China, companies like AMD and Nvidia. They are selling watered-down technology thanks to US sanctions. Huawei is still building its own alternatives to close the gap, but Nvidia is still in the lead with their Blackwell chips. So smuggling US products to China is going to continue. It's important we understand how US tech ends up in China, despite the sanctions being posed. So Nvidia, they designed the semiconductors. However, it's TSMC in Taiwan that makes the chips. And these products are then assembled and sold by companies like Dell. And many of these factories are spread around the world. The end products are sold through distributors and bought by smugglers in countries like Hong Kong. They acquire the chips and they bring them into China through everything from air travel and even trucks. There's simply no way to hunt them down one by one, it's just virtually impossible. And to stop this, the US has to literally punish the whole world, we are not kidding here. Stop selling chips to countries or at least impose a very brutal export quota. Maintaining the technology gap is important for the US. That's the only advantage they have left. China controls critical inputs in a supply chain like rare earths. China's manufacturing ecosystem is also world class. If they somehow manage to close the technology gap, they can outmanufacture the US. They will bring the unit cost down so low and grab a lot of market share. That will be disastrous for companies like Nvidia because they have to outsource production to Taiwan. Whereas China, Chinese companies like Huawei, they can do everything within their own ecosystem. It's just one big closed loop. In China, renting cloud services using Nvidia's chips 
is actually cheaper than in the US. When Beijing procures those chips, the operating costs themselves are significantly lower than the West. And this is a very important advantage we can't ignore. When you can operate at lower costs, you can extend your research runway on a very limited budget. Chinese cloud providers charge their customers $6 an hour to use a server packed with NVIDIA's processors. In the US, vendors charge around $10 for the same setup. So Chinese companies have a 40% cost advantage versus their Western counterparts. It's also a signal that a ton of NVIDIA chips and servers are somehow magically entering the Chinese market. There's an abundance of them around and that's why prices are just so low. But let's keep it real, let's keep it 100. China also does their own innovation. Smuggling chips is just one aspect of the semiconductor war. And this next breakthrough changes the game. It flips the script on traditional chip foundries and threatens total wipeout for Western companies. Now, just yesterday, ASML stock collapsed by incredible 15%. Wasn't the demand for chip makers strong? Analysts expected sales of 5.4 billion euros in Q3. But guess what? The company booked only 2.6 billion in revenue. That's over 50% down. US sanctions are beginning to destroy their bottom line and businesses from G7 and friends, well, it just isn't enough. Despite the curbs, China still accounts for half of ASML's total revenue, coming in at 2.8 billion euros, three times the amount of sales to Taiwan. But there's now a serious problem going forward. Thanks to the chip war, China is now developing their own lithography machines. Chinese engineers have been working hard to close the technology gap. Beijing can now create its own deep ultraviolet machines or DUVs to make chips up to 65 nanometer resolution. The smaller, the better. Now, ASML's DUV machine can go below 38 nanometers, so China is a generation behind. But the speed at which Beijing is innovating is astounding. Over half of their lithography machines comes from ASML. Imagine what will happen in the next two to three years. China will bridge the gap, and because of US sanctions, the company can't maximize their revenue to China anymore. At that point, either two things could happen. Either ASML faces complete revenue collapse, 50% of their global sales could come crashing down, and well, they start laying off workers. Or they ignore US sanctions and sell their most high-tech chip makers to China. ASML might just sell their extreme ultraviolet machines to win Chinese money. It is how big the Chinese market is for semiconductors, both the machines and the chips themselves. The demand is enormous. As their engineers continue to innovate, this threatens to wipe out companies like Nvidia down the line. US scientist Steve Su explains this very well. On the legacy chips, not the cutting edge, you know, three nanometer, five nanometer process, but, but the legacy 14 nanometer, 28 nanometer, the Chinese have basically already caught up and they're going to start basically eating market share in all of those product lines. And then at Frontier, you know, at the seven nanometer level, level flop, SMIC is already making seven nanometer process chips for Huawei, both for its phones you know, small SOCs for its phones, but also big AI accelerator chips like the Ascend uh, 910B. So right. all of this has happened because U.S. policy was very stupid. And I think because po U.S. policy underestimated how capable the Chinese tech ecosystem was. And th they thought, oh, the, what's holding you guys back is that we have a huge technological advantage over you. And that's what's going to keep you from catching up. And here's how dangerous things are for Western chip makers. China is moving to disrupt the very technology behind semiconductors itself. According to the ITIF, China is around five years behind the global leaders in leading edge chip technology. Companies like Nvidia and AMD, they are still well ahead. So instead of just playing catch up, China is trying to leapfrog the competition. Instead of just making traditional chips the old fashioned way, Beijing wants to use light itself. To create semiconductors. Silicon photonics or optical chips is quite simple to understand here. Instead of electrons, which is the traditional method, the chips uses photons. These light particles are used to process and transmit information. It's a better way to make chips and more importantly, the US doesn't have a dominance on this technology yet. 
so they can't sanction China. As we move towards quantum computing and 6G networks, you need chips of the future, semiconductors that can reduce power consumption and more importantly transmit data at incredible speeds. This is one field that China has a massive advantage in. They are making photonic chips, they are faster and a thousand times better than silicon based chips. And this should be downright frightening for the West. Their stranglehold of AI chips is about to get undone. If a Chinese product is better and cheaper, countries around the world, they will abandon Nvidia and AMD for this new alternative. The big hurdle is getting the technology right and this is where China surprised the world once again. They were able to light up a laser light source showing that photonic chips are indeed possible. The closer Beijing gets towards light-based semiconductors, the greater the risk to companies like Nvidia. Let's not forget that the West, today they spend a fortune on R&D. AMD, Qualcomm and Nvidia, these are some of the leading chip giants in the US. They are spending anywhere from $5 billion to $8 billion annually in research and development. On average, that's around 20% of their total sales. It's an incredible burden that has to be funded internally. Here's the crisis they face. As China develops photonic chips, the old generation chips quickly becomes obsolete and that will collapse revenue and make R&D extremely expensive. This is now basically a competition between the Western system and China's command economy. Can the private sector allocate resources better than a centrally planned economy? This is the big question today. The chip war is only going to get worse. More punishments are coming. The US, they can't afford to give up the lead because that would be it. China getting their hands on cutting-edge chips would mean a new price war with G7 producers. And we know Chinese supply chains are superior but it goes even beyond that. This graphic shows us China's chip network and how self-sufficient it really is. Huawei on the right is the Chinese tech giant. The company integrates chips into solutions. They make the end products to sell to customers like you and me. All of their inputs, especially semiconductors, are coming from local Chinese manufacturers in the middle. They could be just down the road or in the next building 100 feet away and we are not kidding here. And all of these manufacturers are getting support from the Shenzhen Major Industry Investment Group. That's government support, government money to build out Huawei supply chain and it has been happening since 2019. When Chinese scientists develop a photonic chip, the entire supply chain now kicks in. They will get government support to build the manufacturing facilities to bring costs down. Huawei will then integrate this new technology into computers, phones, and servers. And that's how serious China is in this semiconductor war. It's just one big show hand on the poker table. Sure, the US might have a full house of aces, but Beijing could just have a royal flush under their sleeves. But let me know what you think. How far will the US push the chip war? And how long before China catches up? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.